and I'm really excited to talk with this director. Uh, the film is called Queen of Basketball. And when you hear this woman's story, you're going to ask yourself, why didn't I know who Lu Lucia Harris was? Why didn't I know? I knew who she was. I started my career as a sports writer. I knew who she was, but I'm glad that she's been immortalized in this film. Let me welcome the producer and director, Oscar nominated, Ben Proudfoot. Welcome. Thank you so much, Karen, for, for having me. Good to see you. Good to see you. Now, the Proudfoot made gave me uh native american vibes uh indigenous people's vibes and i like it i like it am i am i in am i stepping in that it's it's a scottish name is it? uh yeah my my uh ancestors on my dad's side come from scotland a place called craggy burn in scotland i'm glad you know that because hunter's a scottish name and oh, yeah. my ancestors come from i own some people and then i gave them my name don't feel uncomfortable. It's okay. I do this regularly. <laughs> what, what inspired you to tell this story? Because, uh, you know, Lucia, you know, when we think about Lucia Harris, like the pioneer, the first woman to be drafted into the NBA, <laughs> we're talking about Olympian, we're talking about six foot three, amazing, probably one of the best to pick up a ball during her generation. But a name we don't know. What, well, how did you find it? Well, I, you know, I'm a short documentary filmmaker and I, I really love, I love making films about people where there's a big gap between their significance and their importance in history and how, how well known they are. And my friends know that, my colleagues know that. I'm constantly researching for stories like that. And a friend of mine, Haley Watson, who's a, also a director and cinematographer, whispered in my ear, this is like June, 2020, Google Lucy Harris. And I'm not a basketball fan, really. Like I know nothing about basketball. And I Googled Lucy Harris and I saw this incredible resume, right? First and only woman drafted into the WNBA. First no, NBA, NBA, there was no WNBA. Sorry, sorry. Yes, you, I just never. I misspoke. Um, uh, first woman and first woman of color enshrined in the Basketball Hall of Fame, you know, scored the first basket uh, in, in the Olympics as a woman, led her tiny team to three national championships. And I couldn't find any footage of her playing. And I could barely find photos of her. And her name was often misspelled, Louisa Lucia. And then it was at Harris or Harris Stewart or, you know, what, who, well, this 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 should be all worked out by now. This person should be printed on our money. I mean, she's clearly a singular talent. I didn't understand. And it was pretty easy to get a hold of her. You know, it was pretty easy to get her on the phone. Wow. I thought it was really strange. You know, I'm wow. I'm someone who, you know, I know if you're really preeminent, it's probably pretty hard to get you on the phone. Very easy to get Lucy on the phone. And I just explained who I was. I explained that I had, you know, this partnership with the New York Times where I was telling stories in the short documentary format and that I would love to, you know, help, help her tell her story. Um, and she said, yeah, you know, come on over. I'm here in Greenwood, Mississippi. And so we, we hopped in, in a minivan. It was in the middle of the pandemic and we drove to Mississippi in two days. My heart is breaking right now on so many levels, Ben. You just, you, uh, and, and I want everyone who's listening to, to hear this. You picked up the phone and called this iconic woman who the world had forgotten. And then you went to Mississippi and sat with her and told her story. And I know those listening right now, there are people in our lives and I, you know, I call them elders who have a story to tell and nobody's there to tell it. And I want to say thank you, first of all, because she left this earth January 18th, 2022. She just she just passed away. So if you didn't do that two years ago and I, you know, as I was thinking about that, um, I, I had two opportunities to talk to two people before they died and I didn't do it because mm -hmm. your schedule is busy and you always have a reason. But tomorrow's not promised. So you did that. Uh, and thank you for that. So what did you find uh, in that trip in the first time you sat in front of her? <laughs> I mean, she's, it's uncanny because I was very aware that I was in the presence of 
you know, one of the most dominant athletes of the 20th century. But she is so um, unassuming and giggly and focused on you and just charming and, and sweet. Um, and that, that contrast is, which, which is really on display in the film, is really attractive, right? Um, because she's not that, she's not this sort of brazen, pompous, arrogant personality that we expect from somebody who's, who's, who's number one, right? Um, so that was the first thing I noticed was, um, was how comfortable she was. Um, and, and the other thing that I noticed was how good her memory was. Like I, you, you, you interview people for a living, I interview people for a living. You're asking people something to happen 45 years ago. You know, the details are getting a little soft. She remembered everything. I mean, she could tell you the specific narrative of a particular game, where the where it, where it broke, um, who the other players were, how many points she scored in that game. She mm. had an extraordinary mind, um, which was a huge deal for me as a filmmaker because that's what we need. You know, we need the details of the story. That was the other thing that I noticed is how. Um, what a great memory she she had. And then um, just how good of a storyteller she was and how much was going on in her in her face, uh, in her expression, very expressive person. Um, and it was just magic, you know, when you when you have this combination of an unbelievable story, an incredible and willing storyteller with a perfect steel trap memory um, who hasn't had the opportunity, that's what the documentary format is made for. Mm. She was uh, born in Mississippi. Parents were sharecroppers. Uh, she scored 46 points, the school record in high school, and went on, of course, to Alcorn State, uh, where she led that team to several championships, as you mentioned. How much of Mississippi Delta, shows? Delta. She actually Excuse said me. no to Alcorn State. She said no. I apologize. I'm sorry. Delta State. Delta State. Yeah. How, how much of Mississippi is a uh, part of this documentary? A lot. I mean, she, she, I think she lived in Texas for a few years, but basically she spent her whole life in Mississippi. She was born in Minter City, a small, small town in 1955. Um, when she was six months old, Emmett Till was murdered in Money, Mississippi, not, you know, I think it's like a 15 minute drive. So that's the context. And mm. She uh, went to Amanda Elsie High School, which was in Greenwood, um, which, which is very proud. It has a huge, huge billboard of Lucy when you drive into the high school there. And then she went to college at Delta State University uh, in Cleveland, which is about an hour, hour away um, west. And then she- Cleveland, and, Cleveland, not Cleveland, Ohio people, Cleveland, yeah. Mississippi. People are yeah. like, Cleveland, Ohio, no, Cleveland, Mississippi. Um, which is, yeah, it's, it's a small college, about 2,000 2, students. And um, yeah, she took them to the national championships three times in a row. Pretty amazing. Physically, uh, you said that she was, you know, not, not what you expect from a champion. But I imagine six foot three, she left. The reason why she did not, I don't want to give away too much, did not uh, take the NBA up on their offers because she uh, decided to become a mother. Yes. Right. And so we think about those choices. Men don't have to make those. You know, they have babies all the time. They don't have to uh, forsake their careers to do that. I feel like she 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 uh, leaned into that motherhood role. Um, and so some of what you are describing as a mother, you know, that met you at the door and wanted to make sure you're OK and see, you know, yeah. uh, physically six foot three, though. Was she formidable? Because you're you're not six. Oh, three. Yeah. I can tell through the Zoom. Uh, not six, no, I mean, physically, she was formidable. I mean, she looked, she looked, uh, I mean, her hands were enormous. I mean, you, it, it was, it was not that she wasn't physically formidable is it was her personality was so soft and sweet, you know, but yeah, she, I mean, she was in a wheelchair. Um, when we conducted the interview, she had had some problems with her knees. Um, but, but she was, a even even sitting down, you could tell you could see. this was an athlete 
and she, you didn't want to, yeah, she, you could tell she, this was, a, this was the physique of a, of a competitor. Yeah. We're talking about Lucia, Lucy, Lucy Harris, the queen of basketball is Ben Proudfoot's latest uh, film that will, um, what platform is it on? It's on, uh, it's on YouTube for free. Everybody can see it. What? Yep. All right. So what deal is that? What deal? How do, why would you do that, Ben? You know, because my goal isn't to make money off of this. I love you for that. I, you know, I was like, I'm just sitting here. I was like, first of all, for you to get in a, in a van to go down to Mississippi and sit with this, this woman that no one was sitting and talking to, to make sure that we never forget who she is. I, I just fell in love with you from that. But to put it on YouTube where everyone can see it and not make money, not, you know, take it through a distribution deal or go to a Sundance or whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, look, it's, it's a beautiful thing because it combines, I mean, that's my passion as a filmmaker, right? And, um, you know, the short documentary world is not one where you make money anyway. Um, but I did, you know, it's always been at the heart of this project to close the gap forever between her significance and how many people know about her. And it only makes sense to put it on a public platform where everybody in the world can hear her story from her forever.